Hello and welcome back to another Code Pro tutorial. Today's lesson goes out to one of my subscribers who wanted to learn a little bit more about closures and completion handlers and how to use them in an asynchronous context such as making a networking request. So that's exactly what we're going to cover in today's lesson and how to set that up so you can understand how to write them, the parameters, how to use them in a real life scenario. If you're a new iOS application developer just getting started and you want a great course to learn all of the fundamental iOS skills, then definitely make sure you check out my iOS development fundamentals course available both on Udemy and on Skillshare. This course is great for beginners. It has over three hours of video tutorial content. We build an app together from start to finish and you learn all of the skills that you need to master to become a great iOS developer. If you sign up using my links, you'll get my Udemy course for 50% off and two months of Skillshare premium for free if you use my Skillshare link. So definitely check it out. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So a lot of times when doing asynchronous programming such as making a network request, uh, we're left waiting to get some kind of response back. That might not happen right at that point in time. It might come back a few seconds later. It might not come back at all. Um, it could also depend on the network connectivity, the connection um, of your signal strength. So there's many various factors here. And completion handlers are a form of a closure uh, that are perfect for waiting for asynchronous tasks to finish and then notify some other piece of code or process some response that comes back. So if we look at the Swift documentation on closures, um, just kind of briefly looking at it, we can see that closures are self-contained blocks of functionality that can be passed around and used in your code. They are similar to blocks in C and Objective-C and to lambdas and other programming languages. Now, we can go in depth on closures quite a bit, but we're going to focus this tutorial on closures in the context of a completion handler for an asynchronous task, how to write them, how to call them, how to pass them, make them optional. And so that's what we're going to focus on here. So there's a little section here on escaping closures, and I want to just take a quick look at that because these are the kind that we're going to implement. So a closure is said to escape a function when this closure is passed as an argument to the function, um, but is called after the function returns. Um, so when you declare an escaping closure, you will denote it with the escaping tag, and they give us a little code example here of, of what that looks like. So we're going to implement this um, in an asynchronous context, and see how it operates and, and all the ways that we can write and construct an escaping closure. So let me set the stage for our scenario. So here is a simple app that has a button for making a network request and then we have a text view. And the goal is to make the request, listen for the response, use a completion handler to pass back the data and then render the JSON into this text view, which will happen asynchronously. Um, and so I've already written some code here to execute a network request, and it's very, very basic. It just makes a, a simple request to this free weather API. I think we're specifying London as the city that we want to get some uh, weather on or, uh, or, or location search, actually. And we are just simply converting the response back to JSON, um, printing it out here, and then we have to call a completion handler here, and there's a to-do. And there's also uh, an error case if something were to go wrong that we want to also add a completion handler call to um, as well. And probably our guard let check if that could ever fail here. Although in reality, this is a pretty safe to assume that this is never going to return. So these are the three scenarios we want to consider. And we need to create a completion handler as a parameter to this execute network request function here uh, in order to be notified for when this task finishes. So since we're going to be passing this as a parameter, let's start off with the signature of our execute network request. So what we'll end up doing here is to build up our closure, we're going to create a new parameter called completion handler. And the basic structure of the closure is going to look like this. We're going to have open and close parentheses and a return type. In our case, we're going to be returning void. And inside of our parameter list, we are going to specify what we want to basically pass back from our completion handler. Now I think based on what I'm doing here and the logic, we're going to just take the first uh, dictionary that we get back. And what we'll end up doing here is just saying that what this is going to return us is just a dictionary. And that's going to be our JSON, right? Uh, and we're going to mark it as optional just in case something um, doesn't come back or we hit an error and we need to return nil for this parameter, 
we'll denote this as uh, an optional. Additionally, we're going to probably want to pass back any sort of error that we might get, right? So that should also be an optional. We may, we may not have an error in our code. Um, and so that's how we're going to denote the second parameter in the list. So for our scenario, we really don't need any more. But you'll see that right away I'm already getting uh, an error message here from Xcode. It's screaming at me that I am uh, not calling this method the right way because I added a completion handler closure here. So what we want to do here is alter this. So we'll change our execute network request to look like this. And now you can see here that our function call has changed. Um, we have our closure that's executed here. We have the parameters that are going to come back, an error or uh, a dictionary, JSON. And what we can simply do is rename these. Since the type is inferred uh, by the parameter list specified in the closure right here, we can simply call this JSON and error. And maybe JSON responses or JSON payload might make more sense. We can also eliminate these parentheses. These aren't needed either. Um, simply put, in a very basic uh, level, this is all we need for our completion handler to fire. And so what we can end up doing here is doing our logic for when this gets called. So let's go ahead and build this real quick. And now let's go ahead and start making our calls to our completion handler when we get data back or catch an error in the response. So going down here into the response code for my execute network request, let's start off with our first uh, call to our completion handler. So we get back our JSON here, right? And where our to-do is stubbed out, what we can do here is start making that um, call back to the completion handler. So let's delete this out, and we'll make a call to completion handler. And what we'll do here is pass in the city weather dict, which is our dictionary. And the second parameter will be nil. Because in this case, this is the happy path. This is the success. There was no error that came back. Um, and we don't need to provide a value for our error there. So the other um, scenario is, now you can see right here that, OK, closure use of non-escaping. And so what Xcode is saying is I need to go ahead and do what the Swift documentation was telling us because uh, this, this closure can execute after this has already run, right? So when we call execute network request, you know, this code runs its course, but the closure can still fire at a later point. Therefore, we have to mark our completion handler with the escaping tag here. So what that's going to end up doing is changing how our, our signature looks for our function. And you can see now that we have this completion handler at escaping, and then the parameter list, and then the return type for our closure. And that will silence that warning there. So that goes ahead and captures the first scenario. What we want to do then if we caught an error is something here. So we can do completion handler city, actually nil, and then the implied error from the catch block will go back here. So that'll go ahead and take care of that scenario there. OK, but what about the actual URL here that could potentially be nil uh, in return? Well, yeah, sure, we could call our completion handler and maybe make a custom error for that. But really, this should just be a parameter that gets passed in. So we can do this. Um, we can change this to URL and denote that it's a URL type. And the completion handler will be the second uh, parameter to this function. We can then go ahead and extract this guy back out. We can go up to the execute right before we make the call. So inside of our make network request, we can build that up uh, here. And we can pass that in. So what we'll need to do here is alter our request one more time. And it's going to look something like this. It's going to be the URL. And then the contents of the completion handler, just like before, JSON payload and the optional error. And then what we can do here is remove these extra parentheses. We don't need these. And there we go. So now we have now execute network request technically takes two parameters. It takes the URL and it takes the uh, closure, the completion handler. So now let's go ahead and take the JSON payload and bind it to our text view. So what we can do 
is since we are inside of a closure, there's a couple things we have to be aware of. Uh, you have to remember that we're trying to update a piece of UI, right? A text view. It's a UI component, which means in iOS land, it needs to be fired from the main thread. Now, um, what will happen here is if we run this right now and we look at the thread that this completion handler is called back on, it's not going to be on the main thread because the URL session data task is going to execute in a background thread by default. So every time we call completion handler from here and from here, we're going to be on a background thread. Now, obviously, we could wrap our calls here inside of the main thread if we wanted to. So we could do dispatch dispatchq.main.async and then wrap the completion handler to fire on the main thread. And sure, that maybe that works. Uh, but for this example here, what I'm going to do is dispatch q. Dot main dot async, and we're going to execute this inside of the main thread. And this is also a closure in and of itself, actually. Um, so everything that's firing inside of here is firing on the, the main thread. So what we'll then do is do self dot text view. And actually, if I try to just do text view uh, dot text equals JSON payload dot debug description, um, it's going to get a, a compile error because I'm I, I have to reference self inside of the closure. Um, and it says right here, uh, reference to property text view and closure requires explicit self to make capture semantics explicit. So by inserting self here, uh, I can go ahead and get past that error. So let's go ahead and run this now and see what, what we get in our simulator. And so there you go. You can see that our completion handler is being called. We are binding the uh, text view uh, text from the JSON payload and rendering that right into our simulator here. So it's just a location type, a city, title of London, a latitude, and a uh, longitude, lat longitude there. So just a very uh, generic uh, network request. In case you don't believe me, uh, if we commented out this dispatch queue.main.async, we run that, I want to show you just kind of these little tricks you got to watch out for when dealing with asynchronous tasks. So let's see what we get in our simulator. Make the network request, and see here, we're returning on thread 4. Thread 4 is in the background thread. So this may or may not work. Um, obviously, it just threw an error, uncaught exception. Um, I tried to update something. Let me see if I can find the message here in this mess. Uh, let's see. Right. Terminating app to uncaught exception. Only run on the main thread for updating the text. So that's kind of proof right there that you got to watch out for these things, because um, it can be a problem when you do UI stuff on the background thread. So we'll wrap it in the main thread and you'll see that the difference here now is we'll be called on thread one instead of on thread four or some arbitrary thread uh, that URL session is going to return us on. So let's run that here and you can see that when we look here we're on thread one over here and this will work just fine. Uh, I know it's a little bit off topic which is something I wanted to mention. Now another point here is self is a um, this is a strong reference to self, right? Uh, we're, we're, we're keeping a strong reference, but if we needed to keep a weak reference for anything that we do inside of the closure to maybe avoid a memory retain cycle in certain scenarios that could happen, what we would want to do is right in front of our, our capture list or our parameters, you know, what we're getting back from the closure basically, uh, we can do something like this. We can say that self is going to be weak by specifying weak self right in front. And what happens is that makes self an optional um, inside of the closure here. So if I run this now, it's going to say that I need to insert a question mark because self could potentially be nil. So sure, you could, you could handle it this way, or you could do something like guard let strong self equals self else, you know, return and then do everything off of the strong self, like this. And that'll build just fine. So that, that's one possibility. Um, but I'm just going to refer to the weak self, which is just the optional version, like this. Um, and, and there's times you want to do this. There's times you don't want to do this. It really depends on how your code is architected, if things can have a strong reference. Because everything in this closure is going to be captured uh, strongly if we don't specify weak self. So there are possibilities, depending on how the code is architected, to get into a memory retained cycle. So generally, uh, weak self is probably going to be safer, um, but you just have to understand when to 
these weeks off or when to keep a strong reference for everything. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But what if we wanted to make this completion handler optional? Right now, if we start typing execute network request, we have to uh, call our completion handler every time. So what we can do is we can wrap our completion handler uh, in a set of parentheses like this. And what we can do is say that that whole completion handler is going to be optional. So what will happen is we'll have to remove the add escaping tag here and we'll have to go ahead and optionally call this back with a question mark in case the completion handler is ever nil. And what we can do then is adjust our call. So that allows us to do something like this. Um, we can then specify execute network request with the URL. And let's just say for some reason this isn't the best example, but we just didn't care about uh, anything coming back. Well, then we can just say nil for the completion handler. And that's totally valid. And that'll execute um, just like it kind of did before, where we didn't have a completion handler at all uh, by specifying nil for um, the completion handler. For the final part of this tutorial, let's take a look at how we can clean up how we actually express our um, completion handler, our, our closure. What if we could give this a name so that if we wanted to use this in multiple places, uh, we can just refer to the name rather than having to type the capture list, you know, and then the return type. Well, we can do that with a type alias, and it kind of makes this a little bit easier to express. So what we can do here is we can copy our whole closure body, and let's just go up to the top of the view controller, and we can use the type alias keyword, and we can give it a name. So I'm just going to call mine networking response. You can call it whatever you want that makes sense for your uh, context. I'm going to paste in the entire closure here. I'm just going to clean up the ends of it here and then let me just go ahead and build this. I think I'm missing one of my parentheses here. I believe that should build successfully. And so what we can do then is any place we want to use it, instead of having to type out this long closure inside, we can just say that this completion handler is going to be networking response. And if we modify uh, any of the signature, any of the, any of the elements in the capture list here, well that will apply for anything that we type alias as networking response. So it makes it really easy to change everything here and then it's going to get updated anywhere else it's being used. Uh, so if we look at how it's being called, execute networking request, you can see that now all of a sudden we have the type alias response here. Uh, and if we hit enter, it's going to automatically fill in our capture list of our uh, JSON and the optional error if something went wrong there. So that's really, really kind of nifty. Uh, if I wanted to you know, make this non-optional, I can do something like that. And then all of a sudden that applies updates everywhere. So I'd have to fix it like that. Um, and so on and so forth. So that's just a cleaner way of kind of defining this in, in almost like a constant. If you change it here, it's going to be updated everywhere it's being used. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, you know what to do. Smash that like button, consider subscribing to Code Pro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure you follow Code Pro on social media. You can find me on Twitter, on Facebook, on Skillshare, and on Udemy. And let me know in the comments section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by, and I'll catch you in the next one.